Let's click. Cool. I'll check the space that we have on the cloud. Got to move things from there to the drive periodically. But surely it would tell us if we had less than an hour of recording space or not. It might just cut out at some point. Um, recordings. Is it recording right now? Yeah, it is. Yep. Cool. I um, wish I didn't have my arm down like that. That's so annoying. <laughs> sort of foreshortening effect. Ah, hello. We've got M now. Small meeting tonight, M now, but uh, we're going to go ahead anyway for the benefit of recording. So welcome. Welcome. Uh, in fact, we are recording. Um, so the the recording will just show the speaker in the top corner, and um, we can turn the um, turn the recording off at the end and have a bit of a chat afterwards. So thank you everyone for coming to the first monthly meeting of Fusion for 2023. Uh, Happy New Year, just like the old year, or perhaps hopefully not. Um, I am signing in from Sydney's Inner West on Gadigal land, part of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to Gadigal elders past and present uh, and to the elders of uh, the lands where everyone else is signing in from. Um, January is always a, um, an interesting time on the, the calendar for Australian identity. There's obviously the January 26th Invasion Day, Survival Day, protests and rallies, which uh, this year we're putting forward alternative views to uh, what could be done for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander self-determination, apart from the referendum that we're going to be having soon for a voice to parliament. So there's a lot of different and important perspectives to get across in that discussion. So our February meeting, uh, we will be looking at some regular updates and also some new and exciting things that are going on. So firstly, we'll start with the membership and finance updates that we have every month. Starting with membership, um, as I mentioned, uh, I'll be uh, presenting this state by state. Uh, going forward in 2023, we used to show it by branch, but the state memberships are becoming more relevant as we're looking towards uh, potentially getting registered for state elections and council elections. So we've got uh, 1,788 members currently, and I apologise for that number. Having just spoken about January 26th, I didn't make that up. We've got 28 fewer members since December last year, made up by 10 new signups, 29 expired members. So if your membership has expired, but you still want to be a member of Fusion and, and you're a member of a branch that expires your membership, please do get in touch. Um, if you signed up on the Fusion website itself, uh, that membership at this point is not expiring. So you don't have to worry about that. And uh, nine active cancellations of memberships. Um, just a note here that there's uh, the numbers might be uh, within 10 members for, for any particular group, there might be a few inaccuracies there, but the overall number is going to be very close to the to what it is. Um, so Victoria and New South Wales here are always jostling for the largest number of members per state, um, with close to 600. Um, and I'll I will put labels on these because it's um, it's a bit hard to see which state is which at a glance here. Um, but many of these numbers kind of represent or reflect population differences from state to state in any case. 
Um, and if you ever want any more detail on numbers of members, please just uh, get in touch and um, I can see what I can provide. Um, here it is as a pie graph. Ooh, I forgot to change these numbers. Um, please ignore. Um, so let me know also if you think it's useful to have the uh, month by month as well as the overall or if one's more useful than the other. Uh, that's about it for membership updates. So um, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Andrea Leong. I'm a secretary. Michael Moroski, our treasurer, will do the finance update. Alrighty, thank you, Andrea. Um, so we this is we missed the last um, uh, the December update. So uh, I'll just quickly go through December and January. Um, so profit and loss for both of those. Um, we did do a uh, sort of a donation email, the donation drive, um, requesting some just sort of reminding people that donations are tax deductible and whatnot, and um, requesting some donations. And we got a, a fair few in. So uh, thank you everyone for that. The, this nine hundred and twenty nine dollars in donations is is a fair bit higher than we usually get per month. Um, and uh, from an expenses standpoint, it was pretty standard um, in, in terms of expenses in that one. So, um, which is good because in the next one, we've um, got a bit more uh, coming out. So um, the consulting accounting is just zero, it's just accounting software and the IT and subscriptions is just the very, uh, a few of the various things that we pay for, such as the Google accounts and um, uh, a couple of a couple of other just sort of subscriptions and various things that we have to pay for there. The transaction fees are, once as I usually mentioned, is just the cost that we pay for receiving donations through Nation Builder. Um, so total of four hundred and thirty-eight dollars and eighty-two cents out. Um, so just we'll just jump to the next slide quickly and the January updates, uh, the January profit and loss report. So skipping the nine cents interest, um, we received three hundred twenty-four dollars of donations. Um, so more sort of closer to the kind of pledged uh, monthly. Uh, donations that we have, which is good. Um, once again, thank you, everyone. Um, and then again, consulting accounting is zero. ID subscriptions is uh, a couple of those. Um, I'm trying to remember the, oh, actually, so the IT subscriptions uh, in the previous month had uh, our renewal of Zoom, our annual Zoom account to apply. That was a little more. So this IT subscriptions is just the Google for the for month. And we have a big row in merchandise. So um, there's some upcoming um, I think Andrew will be talking about some upcoming um, uh, things around an event that will be that is being planned uh, in a couple of weeks uh, that we'll be attending, and there is some uh, merchandise that is being purchased for for that. So I'm sure there'll be a bit more information on that coming up. Uh, and then again, transaction fees. So um, so that, that's the that's January, and then just the next slide will be the balance balance sheet. So um, the Total, uh, sort of total net assets we have is that main that net assets above the equity column there is the main thing to look at is uh, ten thousand four hundred and ninety three dollars and sixty five cents. So that's the total so we have in the in the coffers right now. Um, as usual, we we keep somewhat of a, a float for expenditure, um, so we don't want to be spending all of that straight away. But there is a bit of as usual. There's a we've got a little bit to spend at the moment, so hopefully we've got more things coming up soon and things we can uh use that money wisely on and that's probably all from me at this uh on, on finance until i have to speak in the next segment <laughs> cool thank you and that was if i'm just going to flip back and compare those numbers so 324 in donations for january mm -hmm. 929 for december so turns out asking for donations does uh work to some extent um, and apparently December is the best time to ask for donations. Uh, Saha, you've got your, you've got your hand up? Yep. Um, yeah, that was good on Luke um, for doing that. Um, just wanted to ask, um, because someone had asked me recently, they didn't know how much money we have in the bank, so you just showed that. So $10,000, I guess? Yep, that's about it. Yep. So the, the, the balance sheet is... Um, that's inclusive of any kind of expenditure that needs to come out, but that we have sort of set up as bills. So um, if there's anything 
that's that that's that should be the sort of the true amount it's not necessarily what's actually the number in the bank account because there's a few uh reimbursements pending um so the, the what what's in the actual bank account is a little bit higher than that uh but there's a whole bunch of things that we have so scheduled, mm. scheduled to be paid yes yeah i've been learning about pledges and things like that for um donations lately accounting good mm -hmm. do we have anything else uh, that's all from the finance perspective for me, unless there's any more questions. None from me. None from the floor. So we can move on to some of our more exciting updates. Sorry, finance is exciting. But uh, one of the things that is new this month to announce is the, um, the next steps with our policy development committee, which had been sort of, um, I don't know, commissioned by the executive in the middle of last year and it's it's really just getting off the ground now and um taking shape really well so i'll hand over to michael again who is also the uh the chair of the policy development committee thank you um so yeah so as andrew was saying at the moment um the fusion policy platform is sort of it's a result of a lengthy process during the initial merger last year and um it's time for us to build on that and uh the so, so the executive has appointed the policy development committee. Um, so this is a small group of, of, um, of members. Uh, and the primary objective is not necessarily to be the sole uh, creators of policy or, or, or whatnot. Um, it's more of a it's more of a procedural uh, sort of group around sort of building the procedures for uh, the policy development process. So so a few responsibilities or objectives of it of this. Um, so the first is to make sure that we have these procedures and and the idea of a, like a life cycle of, of policy development. So we know, um, so we're sort of confident in, in how we should be building them, um, and uh, sort of, sort of writing our policy and making sure that there is a sort of a minimum standard for this content. So that mostly is focused around making sure our policies are evidence based. So there is a Sort of a significant standard of evidence that we are um that we're abiding by um this it's sort of a, it's sort of different based on kind of what kind of policy it is um there are certain things that are a little bit more aspirational sort of things more things that are just sort of targets rather than specific things but we want to make sure that anything we are um anything that we are supporting we've we really know what we're talking about um and the other is the the adherence to values. So we have our values framework that has been um, that's sort of was developed during the merger process, um, and it's really important that we build policy based on the uh, values framework. And we so it's it, it makes things easier as well. But um, we want to make sure that we can have a sort of consistent message, and it helps us be really confident in what we're trying to achieve. Uh, now the other objective or Sort of responsibility and this is when we take um quite seriously or it's, it's, it's very important uh, they all are but um we want to make sure this is a, a, a member driven process so um so i mean our, our main goal is to facilitate this process so it creates this high quality stuff and like there are a lot of you sharing thoughts of and opinions in places like discord uh and elsewhere and we want to make sure that you can get involved um so on to i think it's the next slide um so just some things around just a summary of what we're doing currently um so we're developing some foundational procedures so this is again this is more of an admin side, side of thing but we're just building a sort of a manual um of of, of kind of defining what these processes should be um the next thing we'll be doing is sort of with along with the engagement committee we'll be working with them soon and we'll start this process um soon but what we want to look at doing is a some sort of member survey um and uh sort of capturing a couple of things like um what are the most sort of important uh policies to to members at the moment what kind of things that um uh what, what, what kind of what kind of things we should we be putting the most resources into and things like that um and uh also and and just yeah working out how you might be able to get involved and and things like that as well um now uh so and then and the next two things sort of uh sort of more topical things so these are so we've got a couple of some, some upcoming policy events so a little while ago we had um 
one regarding um, nuclear power and sort of the nuclear industry. Um, so it was a talk sort of by an expert and we were keen to get as many of those lined up and ideally um, if we can sort of have some more of these events where we have experts uh, sort of being able to present or sort of certain advocates uh, being able to present on particular topics and then opening things up for discussion amongst the membership so that we can uh, sort of have a bit more of a formal place to have some of these discussions uh, there and and sort of beyond that um, there will be uh, sort of yeah, we're going to have a, a, we're going to try to sort of solidify the ways that uh, the membership can submit information and uh, provide feedback or suggestions or requests to get involved and things like that. Um, now, just and then this last point here, we have put a little bit of time into uh, a new policy around uh, the legalization of commercial surrogacy. So one of our uh, executive members, Owen Miller, had put a whole bunch of time and research into this is this as a suggestion, as um, as it's somewhat topical for again for the uh, event coming up, and it was one of the things we wanted to be able to uh, bring to the table. Uh, so we put a whole bunch of work into that, and this has been a, sort of like one of the first things we've worked on. So while we're doing a whole lot of pre procedural stuff, we want to make sure that we are bringing some new ideas and policies to the table as soon as possible as well. Um, so in terms of getting involved, uh, we will be, as I said, we'll be sort of opening up some new channels. Ideally, that's some sort of forms on the website and some ways to, to really sort of structurally receive that information. Uh, but for now, if anyone has any questions or feedback or requests, um, you can feel free to email us at policy at fusion.org.au and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Nice. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, so I suppose with the commercial surrogacy policy, there's um, urgency there, even though it might not uh, come to mind as uh, a core issue um, based on some of what we've promoted in the past. Um, it is because it's for an upcoming event, so I guess there's going to be a bit of, um, I don't know, I don't want to say tension or competing, but, uh, yeah, between urgent and sort of more longer-term uh, core issues. Um, but, yeah, keen to get involved and see how that um, is managed. Yeah, and we and we want to make a distinction between, uh, it's something we've been discussing a lot, is, is we want to have a distinction between things that are sort of aspirational policies of, hey, it would be way better if we could achieve this particular outcome uh, versus here is a sort of detailed layout of implementation steps that really needs to have a really good amount of sort of evidence backing and um, sort of thorough explanations. So, I mean, there's all sorts of, uh, we, we don't want to have to be able to sort of not be able to say anything because we haven't had, we, have, we don't have the perfect explanation for it. This is, so the, the commercial surrogacy policy, just to summarize is, um, currently, commercial like sort of uh, it is illegal to uh, have any um, sort of commercial arrangements, so enforcing any contracts or anything like that um, for uh, for surrogacy. Uh, now, there's all sorts of it is a potentially very very complex issue. There's all sorts of uh, sort of issues that can be created by uh, sort of opening it up or or, or or making things this this more accessible. So, uh, but the there are a lot of people who. Uh, lose out who are sort of unable to have children um, and uh, sort of seek the sort of surrogacy services from either overseas or are just not able to. And so we believe that um, if there is a way to uh, legalize commercial sur surrogacy under a strongly regulated process to make sure that uh, all parties are safe and it's not open to exploitation and things like that, because that is a huge, um, that, that, is a, that is a huge possibility, um, then uh, that, that is something that would be certainly something that would be aligned with our values. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. It's and interesting because, you, sorry, when you said the word know. access, like um, to make it more accessible, uh, you'd have to also think about um, everything being accessible there for you know it's like you'd have to get to a level of quite yeah just an initial thought what were you saying Andrea um yeah so with with policies like that I guess it is um there is a level of evidence that we can use which is looking to other countries that we might consider fairly consider uh, fairly comparable or similar in their systems like New Zealand Canada um 
and seeing what they have in place and uh, proposing policy trials or something like that. So there's there's always more cautious things that we can do. Um, yeah, and so right now the the position that we're sort of we're, we're at is that um, pursuing it as an objective is 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 something we can get behind, but the actual implementation and the feasibility of of doing so um, is uh, is is the thing that we're still going to be working on. So we're not going to we're not able to we're not going to say oh yeah we should definitely do this and this is um, exactly the the policy or anything like that until we have a really good level of understanding and we've we've had a look at both the yeah the uh, other countries' policies and how that what how the debate has been going in Australia up until now um, and all the various unique elements that um, will affect it in Australia as well. Mm. Yeah, you know, I was sorry, girl. Yeah, I just meant to say at the start of that that also we've there is a a limit to the amount of research we can do. You know, we can ask experts and we can find whatever is freely available. Um, but yeah, there's um, the information that we'll be able to find is somewhere between none of it and all of it for any given topic. So we'll do the best with the information we can find. Yeah, and I I think there's always there should always be a uh, a position we can take on on pretty much any topic, but that top but that uh, position should be we're not sure or there is very little information available yet, uh, and it's we should be very responsible with the things we say. Um, I've always respected the people who can say I'm not sure yet. I need more information over the people who uh, make statements or <laughs> are confident uh, assertions about things. Um, and, and turn out to just be guessing. Yeah. Did did we uh, mention using the values framework just to run it through that and see what it pops out? Uh, yep. Yep, we did. So um, that's, so we're not in particular with this, but um, we have sort of run over a few exercises and at this being the first, um, this being the first policy uh, that the PDC has, has worked on, there is a um, obviously, we're still developing a lot of the procedures, so we're being very careful not to sort of rush ahead with this. Uh, but we are focusing on that's so the in terms of being able to uh, commit to smaller objectives or more aspirational things. That's something that we can use the the values framework as it is and the procedures we've we've got so far to 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 sort of make those decisions around around those kinds of things. Yeah, I think I'll have to sit down and write it down first before I say it out loud. Um, because I haven't thought of it yet. Um, but I was also going to ask uh, or, or say, I was thinking maybe to bulk up policy ideas, part of the implementation plan would be um, you'd have an economic justification for it, because I feel like that would be the practical implementation part of a policy. You know, it's like the practical, what is it? Yep. So this is all things. The, uh, these are all things that we'll be doing as part of the procedures. So some of the yeah. standards we'll be developing, sort of developing and setting for uh, the development of of sort of more detailed policy will be a combination of feasibility studies, which is both from an economical standpoint, a um, sort of a political will standpoint. So how popular something is, whether or not something is is in high demand, uh, what kind of opposition there might be, but pre predominantly what are the and and yeah, and what are all the mechanical sort of things that are required. To, to be able to get something done uh, because it's it's all well and good to say we should do this thing but if there are if it's if it's incredibly expensive or if it's something that has or existing regulation that makes it uh, that interferes or whatever it might be there might be foreign policy relation uh foreign policy implications there's all sorts of things that, that need to be considered and so that's one of the things we're doing is just to make sure we're, we're outlining that so when we um get further into that uh, and into policy development, we can, we've got all that laid out. Um, oh, yeah, I'm just um, brainstorming. I'm thinking you could have some issue in mind uh, that you want to change and then prove it by saying this is the economic impact it could have as well. I'm just thinking of ideas of how to push certain policies because what I was trying to say before is um, I'm thinking of economic or economy as being the applied ideology potentially you know mm -hmm. um yeah well i mean if there's any for any of these kinds of ideas and and things we want to you know, wants to make sure that we um 
that we do uh sort of are keeping track of or, or factoring into these these things yeah. uh make sure oh, and see so yourself and yeah, and, oh, and and anyone else listening, um, just yeah, make sure to shoot shoot those um, those value those things to the policy at Fusion Party uh, email address, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, that it gets heard. Um, and just on, on, finally, on that like the the as 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 I mentioned before, that the the PDC is not we're, we're not the ones that are going to be doing or just writing all the policy by ourselves. Uh, the plan is that we'll be creating sort of more working groups. So um, the idea would be to try to get members involved, anyone who's sort of passionate about a particular thing, anyone who has expertise about particular topics, uh, we'll, we'll want to make sure you, we can get you in and, and get you involved in uh, working on those policies. So, um, and, and, and the PDC is more just about overseeing those and making sure that uh, those, those groups have, those working groups have uh, the, the resources they need and um, some amount of oversight as well. Oh, uh, so that would be really cool if um, I've never written a policy, I don't think. So um, would you have like a template form or just some sort of structure for them to fill out that you yep. need? Yep. So that's the that's the sort of the policy procedure manual that we and the and sort of the standards that we'll be all documenting. And so we're hoping to get that um, sort of ready over the next month. Uh, and um, there's a lot of work involved in it. Um, and we're trying to sort of, there's a few things we want to make sure we're doing at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, stay, stay tuned for all those and we'll, we'll get that, we'll get those, um, get those out as soon as we can. Oh, yeah, I'd like to learn. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, um, let's get on to the point, the last, the last point, which is uh, the event for which the commercial surrogacy policy is being looked at in short order. That is Mardi Gras Fair Day stall. So there's, um, you know, very widely known as the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Parade. But before that, there's two weeks of festivities and conferences. And that kicks off with the Fair Day. I think that's the start on Sunday, the 19th of February, which is uh, now um, obviously less than three weeks away. Um, so we are going to be giving away merchandise and uh, which is these uh, these hand fans on a hot day, presumably, uh, and it's only getting hotter. Um, and the uh, what we want to achieve with that stall is to connect with members of the public um, who resonate with our ideas and maybe some who don't. Um, but to find out what uh, what everyone wants to see in federal and New South Wales politics and to have some conversations. Um, so we'll hope to get a lot of uh, good videos from people who are happy to be on camera. We are calling all designers right now because we need some decorations for our stall. Um, we've talked a lot about having uh, cutouts that you put your head in and you could be like a parliamentarian or something, but all sorts of ideas. We need uh, we need to get those ideas uh, happening, and we're also looking for people in Sydney who can staff the stall. So it opens at ten a.m. and goes until evening. Um, we're sort of expected to be there until the early evening, and I'm not sure when it finishes. They didn't actually give us a finishing time. So anyone who would like to come along and be part of this fun day out in Sydney. Uh, drop me a line, get on the Discord. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any comments on this? Can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Mm. There's fans, and I just put it in the chat, but I said, and it's only getting hotter for the next fan. Mm. <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> it's your quote. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it'll be, I think, um, from my perspective and like policy, this but from the policy perspective and things like that as well. Um, it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of engagement we get out of it. Um, especially just pushing particular policies within, um, certain demographics or sort of, sort of or promoting them and, and, and seeing what feedback we get. So we'll, we'll, we'll be looking to make sure that there's the sort of ample sort of channels for uh, people to, 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 to submit that. Some feedback for that at the event. Yeah, so we want to be sharing our policies, but also finding out what resonates most with people, and also 
maybe collecting some demographic data as well mm. from people who are happy to share that and tell us what they think. Um, I suppose that's probably all I had to say about that. Um, yeah, really, really keen on design ideas because I am not a creative myself. Um, I will think of things. I know I said I would. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I know something mm. hilarious and awesome when I see it. Yeah, but, you know, I said the, the image that keeps coming to mind every time I think about it. Mm. <laughs> not pleasant. <laughs> Involving fish and chips? Um, fish and chips, yeah, uh, kind of. And I think it was, a, yeah, yes, it was fish and chips, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that was all on that, really. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that in the last weekend, we had a couple of social events and we can always do more of those. Um, so if you're a, a Fusion member from anywhere in the country we can, uh, and you want to organise something, we can see how many members are in your area and put a call out and try and get a social event going. Yep. And now you're in um, Queensland, aren't you? I hope I got that. Yes. <laughs> I always thought you were from Victoria for some reason, but yeah. Everyone's from Victoria in some way or another. <laughs> uh, and then upcoming events, yeah. So as mentioned, we've got the Mardi Gras Fair Day stall in Sydney and then our next monthly meeting, same time next month, first Wednesday, which is the 1st of March. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. All right. So there's nothing left on the slides, right? Okay. No, that's, that's, the that's it. So um, hello, everyone, President. Um, I had an interview with Six News last night, so thank you. That was super fun, and it was just really good to um, spruik fusion again. It just brought the passion back a little bit um, because that's what we're working on um, in the background. We've been doing a lot of um, visioning and, you know, inner self searching, <laughs> or at least I have. <laughs> and I mean, like, I'm just joking or whatever. I'm just like questioning myself now anyway but um we've we were doing a lot of visioning work um and just kind of guiding thinking about what we want to do in politics and and why what we want to see in Australia you know in a very aspirational way um in a very broad sense and then the other thing to do is um just to figure out what you want to achieve for yourself and so we're just doing that in the background, making it very clear what fusion is about and connecting everyone to it, because I think that has to happen. Um, and yeah, I'm just loving seeing policy come up. So thank you, Michael, for doing that. Um, thank you, Andrew, for being um, super just awesome with, well, you're doing so much work in the background, you know, so it's just like every bit of everything. Um, yeah, and we're having a meeting tomorrow um, I feel like I'm reporting, but I guess I am, yeah. We're having a meeting tomorrow where we're talking about our operations manual um, and putting that together, as well as just putting a final cap on visioning. So it's all just like background stuff. Um, but it's crucial. Um, and then from there, I think we'll just come to an understanding and have um, a lot more, um, I guess, clarity about how we want to work and where we want to go. And I'm already seeing it anyway. so pretty good just very pleased I'm glad and and I feel like that's what I want to contribute anyway so if I'm doing that right then I feel good about it yeah and that's it's really good that we're getting to that because we've uh, since our formation we've just had federal election Victorian election it's just been go 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 yeah so. it's been actually yeah well I remember during the federal election um, I felt like it was just, you had to do it. So, mm. but it was very hard. <laughs> yep. But anyway, any questions from the crowd? Mm. Um, more of a comment really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be able to 
uh, get some of the foundations. Um, you know, we all we all kind of know what they are. We mm. all, I think, we all feel these values, but um, I would like to get them articulated so they can be up on the website and mm. in writing because that's what tends to draw me in to a new movement is seeing what they say and seeing mm. whether I resonate and align with that. Yeah. Definitely. And I feel like I, I want to see that clearer. So then it's very easy to just speak it anywhere. So, you know, create videos. I'm really going to get into Vox Pops. So I think what um, Michael was saying about engagement, I'm like, this is a good chance for Vox Pops. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, the hardest question to answer is, so what is your organisation about? Because well, we're about lots of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a funny one if they say organisation. I'm like, huh, okay, well, we're a political one, but if you're going to go broader than that. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, we're a member-driven organisation. We uh, make submissions to Parliament on proposed legislation, so we are, we're not just an election machine. Mm. I feel like we're an activation, have an activation aspect. Mm. Um, there was a uh, point that wasn't on my slides that probably should have, could have been included in the um, under policy was that we have made a submission um, to, uh, as of last week. Um, it was a, um, a, bu a budget submission um, and focused around uh, research into various climate science and technology um, from a climate change perspective. So that was put together by Brian Edwards. <laughs> And mm -hmm. um, that can be, the, the details of that can be seen on, on the website at the moment, I think. Um, I, we can put a summary of it, but when you submit things to parliamentary inquiries and things like that, they generally say, please don't publish this until we do. So it'll be available on our website at some point. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, we did post about it on social media. It's our... It's our chance to make a submission before the um, the government puts together its final budget um, budget, and um, yeah. So we were arguing for a lot more funding for climate um, climate research, and the government has said that they're going to get, um, achieve 15% of their carbon emissions reductions through future technology, which they're just banking on it happening. And it doesn't happen if we don't invest in it. It's just, it's always been the way. Once you put money into things, people are able to research that freely without the fear of not being able to put food on the table. And we make those discoveries. That's how it works. Yep. That's <laughs> how we build the technology to mine the coal. Hmm. But coal is boring and hundreds of years old. We need something else to bring us into the future. Uh, solar panels were too expensive for households to put on their roofs, roofs um, just a few decades ago. And now Australia has the biggest solar uh, rooftop solar uptake in the world. And um, the University of New South Wales, UNSW, does... Uh, world-class solar research, but we don't manufacture much in Australia because um, once, yeah, we don't have the, for some reason, uh, the industry to, to take, take that from the lab into something commercially viable. Hmm. I was thinking about if... Um... Because I know we were saying about having um, manufacturing sovereignty, um, but wouldn't there be a lot of waste if every country was doing that? Like, is it a, oh, I don't know. I guess you can't be an extreme globalization. Like, you can have a blend. <laughs> Generally, yeah. I mean, the, we want to be using comparative advantage, which is that when everyone does. Uh, does what they're good at and what they're able to then then everyone everything's generally more efficient um so i mean us being us, us focusing or trying to develop our industry more would be to focus on particular things that we are good at it's not we wouldn't we wouldn't want to be doing everything or forcing businesses yeah. to exist that can't compete with others 
good. Mm. Yeah. Value adding that we can yeah. do in the things that we already um, are already our major exports. So raw materials and food we export a lot of. We can be doing more value adding in those industries, I believe. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking more about um, we should invest in better farming. Just worried about um, supply chain a little bit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shall we end the recording here? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you for everyone signing in. I'll end the recording and see you next time. Thank you.